what you want, you attract who you are. You don't attract what you want, you attract who you are. As a man get in his heart, you attract who you are. So stop looking for a partner in somebody. Look for a partner yourself. Most times we want that person that will be everything we want without being what the person wants. You know, being a single is a great thing. People don't understand. They think being a single is a burden. I'm telling you, being a single is a wonderful experience. You have all the time to become the best. As a single person, you have all the time to become so organized and prepared so that a man or a woman, whoever finally has you as a life partner, is thanking God all the rest of their life. You cannot be an Omega Family Ministries member, for example, as a lady or as a man and not have a good home. People come here to pick wives because of my teaching. A young man bought me a cow six months after marriage. And he brought the cow. I said, well, you got married. Is it because of the kind of wife that I have? And the woman says, sir, I followed your teachings. The man says, when I close from office, I just want to go home to go and meet her. Why? The teachings we have followed. And I'm going to expose some of them to you. If you don't really have some, you try and get some. You see, a man entered an aircraft and was wearing his wedding ring on the right finger instead of the left finger. And somebody says, sir, sir, sir. You are wearing your wedding ring wrongly. He said, I know. It's because I married the wrong woman. So I'm using that to tell the world that I made a mistake. Since I cannot take up. <laughs> I can't take up. It is better to be a single and prepare for marriage than be married and be praying to be single. It's better to be single and properly prepare for marriage than you get married and be praying to be single no single parent no single father or single mother desired to be a single mother there is nothing that i never knew was like this i never knew she was like this i never people don't change people only improve the truth is you were not conscious of a life partner because you are conscious of a life partner you are you pay attention to details you pay attention to details they say a marriage you don't prepare for even when it comes you'll be confused because you're not prepared for it even when it comes you'll be confused I read, when I read Genesis 2.18, he said, let us make a help suitable for him. Ah, the literal to this version said, let us make somebody to meet his needs. So life partners are to meet the needs of each other. Many of us want to get married with the intention of our needs being met. But what need can you meet? As a lady, have you configured yourself enough that there are certain needs about a man, you can meet it. There are certain needs about a woman that you can meet. Amen. I said amen. When people tell you that they are preparing for marriage, 95% of them are actually preparing for wedding. When the wedding comes, you dance, you stand before um, a man who is a pastor. You know, one girl, she won't stay at home. Her mother will always cook. The girl will go out, go to club, go to party. She will go out before her mother comes, before she come back. Anytime she comes, she'll meet her mother clapping her hands over the pot. She's done. You know, when women put pepper. Final, they put the final sword, they clap their hand. That's all she meets her mother doing, clapping hand over pot. Anytime she comes, her mother is clapping hand over pot. She got married. She met an unfortunate young man. And they went to an unfortunate altar. Joined by an unfortunate pastor. They ended the unfortunate marriage. The unfortunate best man left. The unfortunate bridesmaid left. All the unfortunate 
guests of honor and all left. The girl went home. The man said, I want to eat. She sat down. She got the ingredients, got the pepper, got everything, put them in the pot, and began to clap. She started clapping her hand. Clap, clap, clap. Because the only thing she saw her mother do was what? So she felt once you put pepper, you put onions, you put everything, you light the fire, the next thing you do... That's someone who was not prepared. When you are prepared for something, you don't pray for it, it comes to you. Part of the reason you are still praying for marriage is you are not prepared for it. <laughs> you are not prepared for it. Amen. I said amen. amen Proverbs 24 verse 3 talks about wisdom he said by wisdom a house is built people think you get married when you have money that's an error but you need money to marry you need money to marry it's not true you need wisdom to marry because with wisdom you can manage the little money that you have with wisdom you can marry the little funds that you have a house is built by wisdom to get a life partner, there is a place of wisdom. Number one, I'm going to be back. 45 minutes or 50, I'll be done. Then I'll take a few questions, then we'll see what God will do. The first thing you need to do, if you must choose a life partner, number one, you need a quality relationship with God. Quality. Until you find God, don't look for a partner. If someone is asking your hand in marriage and you are not firm and solid in God, tell him to wait. Build your spiritual life first because without God, you have nothing to offer a partner. Without God in your life, Job chapter 22 verse 21, acquaint yourself now with the Almighty and be at peace with him. Thereby good shall come unto you. I hope there's somebody on the console that will bring up the scripture because I'm going to be bringing out a lot of scripture. So, the person on the console, you get ready. Acquaint yourself with the Almighty. Job 22, 21. He said, and be at peace with him, thereby good shall come to thee. Good. Acquaint yourself now with the Almighty, with him, and be at peace, thereby good. Have a relationship with God and make sure you're at peace with God and he will give you something good something that is enviable relationship with god sponsors quite enough confidence the first is relationship with god sponsors is your confidence your confidence your relationship with god sponsors your confidence one of the major problems people have what brings low self-esteem is low confidence you are smiling because somebody says you are beautiful you are happy you say, i always like they always compliment me you are a joker if a man tells you you are beautiful tell him i appreciate but i know ah, you are wonderful you look so cute i appreciate thank you but i know don't let nobody move you with sweet words because sweet words are nice but people that depend on words to a partner don't keep them so if you are somebody who is easily carried away of course women love flatteries but wise women are not carried away by flatteries. In fact, when push comes to shove, when you become really, really serious, you get your, your relationship is matured. Flatteries don't move anybody. It's like my wife woke up in the morning and she dressed up and said, Wow, you look so good. She was smile, thank you, darling. I said, You look wonderful. I said, smile, thank you, darling. I said, I mean, you look so cute. She said, Honey, I beg, I beg, I'm running late. I'm running late. Why? Because we are now facing serious business. We are married. I don't need too much of this one. I said, you look wonderful. Thank you. You look good. Thank you. You look this. Thank you. How you look? He said, see, 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 the children, they will eat this morning. <laughs> one time I, I was going to my wife, I said, ah, my husband, you look so nice. I said, thank you. He said, come, come, turn. I said, ah, what is that? I should turn for what now? He said, turn. I said, okay, I turn. He said, ah, you look so good. I said, thank you. He said, you look, I said, how much did you say their school fees is? Please let me drop. <laughs> How much is their school fees? Let me drop the school fees. 
Because at that point, you are now faced with reality. When reality dawns on you, flat trees are irrelevant. So all those things they are telling you now, then they use it to deceive you and mess you up. You have to clear. No woman here should be carried away. People say, Yo, you look nice. Fine. Because you don't have a strong cut. When you have confidence in God, you know who you are. Confidence in God makes you know you are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. You are born for something outstanding. The thoughts that God has for you are thoughts of peace and not of evil. So anything a man says now is secondary. Don't be carried away because a, 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 you are, a, you are a, a, a young man. A guy say I cannot marry you because you are too short. Being short is relative. A short man in Nigeria is a tall man in South Korea. You say, oh, they don't like because I'm fat. A fat man in Nigeria, a fat lady in Nigeria is a thin lady in America. You want to see fat people? Go to some parts of the U.S. You see, hippopotamus. Hippopo. <laughs> but when you have confidence, you know who you are. Anything anybody tells you is an additional information. Because you already have this, and that is what relationship because the Holy Spirit gives you this esteem. The Bible says you have more value than sparrows. Am I communicating? Relationship with God helps you to be sensitive. God will open your eyes to see certain characters you cannot cope with in the future. Once the guy is a liar, God will just help you pick it. You just pick the lies. You see this one. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. But if you are not with the spirit of God, you can see all that. Somebody said, I'll call you by 5. 8 p.m. He hasn't called you. You kept quiet. I'll call you by 4. 9. He hasn't called you. You kept quiet. I'll call you by 6. It already done for you. This is a person that does not keep his words. You are picking them. The Holy Ghost begins to show you some things that naturally you would not have seen if not for the spirit of God. So never attempt to start no relationship until you already have one with God. Don't fall in love with nobody until you fall in love with God. Don't fall in love with nobody until you fall in love with God. There are some people that walk out, nobody breaks anybody's heart. People only break relationship. Nobody breaks any wise person's heart. They may break. And let me tell you something about the relationship. Somebody walks out of your life today because God has seen that he will leave you tomorrow. So it's better he leaves you today when you have no children, when you have no responsibility. You can easily move on with your life. Because if he leaves you after you already have four children, how will you cope? A young girl just walks up to you and says, I'm not marrying you again. Why? I don't understand something. A young man sent me a message. I've seen this message several times. He said, Daddy, so I spoke to a girl. She said she doesn't like me anymore. Daddy, please pray. What do I pray for? I should pray for you to be wise. I should pray for you to be delivered from stupidity. If a lady says she's done with the relationship, you let her go. Let her go. If somebody says doesn't want you anymore, what is it? Are you the general overseer of love? Let her go. Let her go. Have a relationship with God. Broken engagement is better than divorce. Let her go. A young man lost weight in less than two days. He just lost weight. Came to me and he was behaving like a, a guinea fowl. Walking with one side of his shoulder. I said, what's the matter? She left me. I said, you are very stupid. You are very stupid. The lady left you and you are sounding like your mother died. So you are very stupid. Can I get out of my office? See what I say, you are not a man. Men don't do this when women walk away. Men smile, shrug their shoulders and they move on. 
smile, shrug your shoulders, and move on. He's sitting down crying. Organizing a funeral for a relationship. Crying and you are mourning. <laughs> you are mourning that somebody broke your heart. Nobody breaks the heart of a sensible person. Because you don't put your heart into it until there's a ring in your finger. Don't put your heart into no relationship until you are in the man's house, until you bear his name. Don't put your heart, I'm advising you. Don't put your heart. Now that you are crying, you are weeping, you want to die, you want to faint, all because it's not taking your calls, you want to faint, you want to die, your, eye, your, your blood pressure has gone up, your eyes are red, you come to church with glasses, because you, you can't see people, they can't see you. Your pastor is preaching, you are not hearing anything. The only part of the message you love is when your pastor says that all that you have lost shall be restored. Amen! That's the only part of the message that appeals to you because that's the message that touches your problem. Say, Daddy, Daddy, you got it, you got it. <laughs> quality relationship number two knowledge knowledge number one in choosing the life part now i told you i'm not going to spend too much time number one in choosing the life part now you need quality relationship with god number two knowledge knowledge people met jesus and they were trying to dispute an issue about marriage in matthew chapter 19 verse 31 they were trying to dispute have a dispute about marriage and Jesus gave them a response Matthew chapter 19 Matthew chapter 19 from verse 3 <clears throat> Matthew 19 verse 3 the Pharisees came unto him tempting him saying unto him is it lawful for a man to put away his wife Matthew 19 verse 3 is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for any cause? And he answered and said unto them, Have you not read? Have you not read? So the crisis in marriage is because you have not read. Is it possible a man put away his wife? God said, No. Have you not read? In other words, what keeps people together is knowledge. The information of what you have acquired about marriage is what keeps you in marriage. All this time you are single. What God wants you to be acquiring now is knowledge. Have you not read? First Peter chapter 3 verse 7 says, deal with the wives, your wives, according to knowledge. You don't move with women according to muscle. You don't move with them according to how cute and handsome and beautiful you are. That is why most celebrities end up having broken homes. Because it's not beauty or being cute that keeps, it's knowledge. You see the young man looking very cute but very stupid. Understand your makeup as a woman. Understand your makeup as a man. Understand your femininity as a girl. Stop walking as a man, as a girl. Stop walking as a man. You are walking like that. Stop walking as a man. Walk as a girl. You need the knowledge. Learn cat walk. Bring out your femininity. How can you as a girl? This is how you are walking. You are just going like that. A, the man is afraid because a man does not want to marry a fellow man. You are just walking like that. Good morning. Walk as a girl. Even if, you know, even if you don't like high heels. In private, practice with high heels because high heels helps a lady to step. Knowledge. As a, as a young brother, stop sounding like a girl. 
How are you? I, I am fine. Shut up! Sound like a man! Even if you have even if you have a tiny voice as a brother, let your, your movement cover up for your voice. Stop that tiny. If you are standing so feminine and you are so weak, the girl is talking, your voice is so tiny. Ah, ah, my brother, good morning. Thank you, thank you. What is that? Amen. That's the truth. Knowledge, knowledge on how to dress. Understand color combination. Not to wear yellow or on top of red and purple like a firefighter. Like a, a firefighter, like you want to go. Brother, if you appear well, even if there's no money in your pocket, a woman sees you responsible. Don't dress and fly your collar like that. Don't fly your collar. Don't snap me, come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Very important that we understand knowledge. You know, in the place of knowledge, physical appearance matters. Physical appearance. Physical appearance, how people appear. There's a way you appear as a sister. Nobody will approach you. Nobody. You are a young lady. You are just 25. But you are dressing like a widow. Imagine a lady. They say, they say what's your best color? You say, my best color is black. Ah! Black! Black, your best color? Can I tell you something? You don't need to dress expensive to appear appreciated. Listen, no matter how much you have, there is a boutique that has your size. If you cannot get from the normal boutique, there is a bend down boutique. And the truth is, the truth is this. Let me tell you the truth. It is not what you are wearing. It is the courage. Somebody wears a designer suit and is working like that, like a civil servant. Somebody else wears a nice gown and is going like that, like Mbeke. Yeah. But somebody else gets bend down boutique, dresses it, irons it, and is taking some steps. Your physical appearance. Your physical appearance. As a brother, don't iron your trouser like a skirt. When you iron, let the gator. <laughs> when you iron, let the gator be reporting. One of the things my wife could not ignore was my dressing. She told me, I like the way you dress. I said, don't mention, don't mention, don't mention. <laughs> Amen. Don't, your, your physical appearance is very important. Learn it. Go to the computer. All of those computer Google and all you have, this is the kind of information you should be gathering. Color combination. Understand it so that you understand appearance. Am I talking to somebody? Very important. Very important. Very important. But as a young lady, you have been carrying one weave on for four months. Carry one particular, one particular S type for nine months. Is it pregnancy? Amen. You know, people do not understand the place of physical appearance. You know, <laughs> you propose to a lady as you are talking to her, your mouth is smelling. Brush. We don't brush teeth. 
teeth doesn't smell it is tongue that smells it's not teeth that smells that your teeth is white doesn't mean you have a good aroma there are people with brown teeth it's their nature they are born like that so it's not the teeth that is dirty it's the tongue that smells stop brushing like this open that mouth and wash it you can't be smelling about bible says you are a scent it says you are a smell he said you are a saint <laughs> you are praying you fast 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 you sweat the sweat will dry you land the altar again you roll 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 you stand up god i must marry i must marry the brother comes he wants to talk to you as you lift your hand uzziah is coming out Oh boy. I'm going to be giving you some scriptures when I get to a particular point. Okay, let me round up. Somebody's not. <laughs> knowledge, knowledge, knowledge on the feminine gender. Knowledge on the feminine gender. You must have knowledge of the other opposite partner, the feminine gender if you're a man, the masculine gender if you're a lady. The truth is women, the way women are wired, women can do 10 things in one day. She's, she'll go to market, she'll come back, she'll cook, she'll prepare food, she'll now go later and see her friend, she'll go. Man is one. He will go to market. He may not think of coming back. That's how men are. Are you following me? He go, he may not come. Or if he goes to market, he'll come back and sleep. But the way a woman is wired, they can do several things. Go to the market, come back, cook, go and collect the money that one of her friends is owing her. While she's going there, she'll carry that her skirt that is bad. She'll have to mend it. Then when she's mending that skirt, from that woman's place, she'll go and collect the other um, Ashwebi material for that wedding. From that place, she'll go and... That's how they are wired. Are you, are you what I'm talking about? So a woman can tell you, I'm coming back 5 p.m. 6 p.m. she hasn't come. Not because she brands up, but because she's wired to do many things. So you tell her, ah, but I thought you were not told me you told me you were going to market. He said, Yes. As I went to market, I now pass there. Collect, I now pass there. I now pass. You will get angry because you now understand that is how they are. You are not going to raise your voice. But you didn't tell me you're going to pass there. No, that's how she is. On her way to the market, the thought of going to check for her skirt came. The thought of this came. The thought, that's how they are. So when a lady tells you I'm going somewhere, she now went to four or five places. Don't get angry. That's how they are wired. They are confused. Sorry. They are they are. <laughs> They do several things. <laughs> Sorry about that. They do several things. But man, that's how women are emotional. Men are logical. Men use sense. Women use emotion. Men think straight. A woman can say, Can you imagine? The man says, Okay, bye bye. He hung it. Boom, just press the phone. The man, not can you imagine? See, you just hung the phone on me. Yeah, that's who they are. They are emotional. You say, what? I just hung. I thought we had done. You just hung the phone. Is, 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 that, is that to hang phone? How else do they hang phone? <laughs> that is how they are. She just wanted you to say good night, sleep well, say something. You didn't say anything. You just hang phone. Why would you hang phone like that? Emotional. A lady was telling me, say, can you imagine after all I did for my husband? My husband was in school in the polytechnic. I struggled with him. He didn't have anything. Now they are married. Look at where he's treating me. And I told her, I said, men, the men do not remember that school matter. He said, are you serious? I said, no, they are not wired like that. Men don't remember all those things. As far as the man is concerned, you insulted me, I can't take it. One way. So you are the one you are remembering all those things because you are emotional you remember when you had nothing there were other people that had more but you ignore them because you had something you are, no he doesn't think like that at that point you are rude you are not respectful that's all he's seeing so if you now understand a simple apology will just do the magic men are logical women are emotional they're emotional hello so you begin to understand you have the knowledge of all of this all of this a, a lady a lady 
told the husband, the husband always goes to a pepper soup joint after work. 7 p.m. He'll go hang with his friend. He said, Come, my husband. What do you go and meet? Because it's not as if the man goes anywhere. Else. The man will go to that joint. He doesn't branch anywhere. From there, open joint. From there, he comes home. Every day, every evening, aside weekend. The woman now said, Okay, I know what I'm going to do. She now prepared, started doing pepper soup every evening. And now, since this is pepper soup, you go to eat outside. You eat it at home. The man will sit down, eat a pepper soup, and dress up, and still go and eat pepper soup outside. So, the woman said, Is there something in that pepper soup that's not in my own? He said, You don't understand. It's not the pepper soup, it is the discussion around the pepper soup. It is the things we discuss. So, what woman should have done as, as she serves the man, she should serve herself, sit with him, and gist, and talk. It is that gist the man is enjoying, not the pepper soup. But some of you, you don't even have knowledge. Some ladies don't even have knowledge on how to even cook food. Do. That is why Indomie is their best food. Indomie. No, why are you thinking of getting married? I said, sing, that's why I said, single old is good. This is the best time. Carry your phone. Go to Google. How do I prepare the Kai Kong? Recipe. How do I prepare a goosey soup? How do I prepare? Learn all those things. Prepare them for yourself. Test it. Do it once. Do it twice. Do it twice. Okay, I've learned a goosey. The next is draw soup. The next is the Kai Kong. The next is this. The next. As a lady, be a chef. Be a chef. That when, when, when your husband eats your food, when another girl is cooking for a man, he will collect the man. The, the wife is in trouble. Not just how to cook the food, how to serve the food. Go to Google and learn. Not to carry rice. You put stew on top. You put beef by the side. You put dodo by the side. The same plate, you put egg. You now put vegetable on top. And it looks like a sacrifice. Like a sacrifice. <laughs> and by the time I see that's not enough when you walk with the manager drop on the altar see your food the appetite is gone when the man opens the food it doesn't the food has no particular name it is vegetable rice dodo egg plantain it has no particular name <laughs> Hallelujah. How do you serve? You bring the food, the plate is clean, the glass is clean, the tray is clean. You put the spoon, you don't carry the rice, you open it, you put food, you put spoon, you put. Are you a farmer? <laughs> you put no. You put you put the spoon by the side. You put the knife by the side and you come and you serve it on your knees. I'm coming. I'll soon hit the guys. Don't worry. I'll hit the guys. Don't worry. Oh, the guys this morning, the guys will not like me. Oh, ah, uh, because I'm going to be hitting the guys with scriptures. All right, let's close, let's close, let's close. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody shall knowledge. Shout again. Shout again. You know, another type of knowledge you need is knowledge on your sexuality knowledge on how to handle your emotions how to handle your emotions it's very important every wise lady never sleeps with a partner because nothing confuses your mind like sex in fact if i would give you a counsel there are certain kind of messages a man will send to you and you don't reply you are quiet did you see it say yes i saw it why didn't you reply i have no reply you don't send your pictures, nude pictures to a, a partner. You don't try that. 
He will see all the nakedness as soon as you get married. Tell him not to worry. That is not only a picture. That when you get married, he will, if you'll be walking around the house naked, you shouldn't worry. But you don't do that before marriage. Someone does not promise he's going to marry you and you start sleeping with him. Because marriage is a promise. You don't give somebody something concrete and all he gave you is something abstract. You give somebody something concrete and he has only given you something abstract. Ah, Apostle, hey, if you say we don't sleep with a girl, how do we know she can be pregnant? Shut up. There is something called fertility test. There's something called fertility test. Go and do fertility test. You will know who can be pregnant. This world has gone, this world has improved. Eh? From your fertility test, we will know if your eggs are ovulating, if the man has a good sperm, all of those tests. And I've told them in church, I said, start doing that test now. Because many potent brothers are getting married and putting sisters in problem. Many sisters that cannot be pregnant are getting married and putting brothers in problem. So we don't just do HIV tests, do pregnancy. We do fertility test. To be sure that after your marriage, you will not kill prayer band with prayer request. Do not give somebody something concrete when he has only given you something abstract. Hello? Hello? You know, men give love to get sex. Women give sex to get love. Some men will do anything. When a man invites you to his house, and the first thing the man is doing is, hey, I like you, sit near me, do all that. That is not a person who wants to marry you. That is not, sit near me, look at you. I've been looking at you, I've been liking you. Yeah, that place you are sitting is too far. Can you move closer? Eh, eh. Is this place comfortable or should we go inside? Bro, no, that one doesn't want to marry. When he's true with you, he will jump onto the next. It's the truth. You need to learn all these things. If you do not put them in the right perspective, there will be a problem. When I was engaged um, to Mama, our houses were closed. And I used to have one or two visitors, and when they come, they'll say, close the window. I said, why would I close the window? Naturally, my windows are, oh, you know I'm not at home, it's when my window is locked. And the window of my house then, is, it leads to the road. So from the road, you, you just know what you are passing, you see the window open. When the window is, when I'm not around, they say, is his window locked? I say, yes, it's not at home. I, oh, I'm, I used, God used to open my windows. So I opened the window. So there's a particular person that will visit me, she will say, lock your window. I say, why? He said, nothing, just lock the window. I said, no. He said, have you not seen the rays of the sun? I said, see your room? It's me that owns the room now. There's no rail anywhere. Lock your window. Ha. I tried the first time, I resisted, I tried the second time. So the third time, what I did was, when I know the person is coming by 4 p.m., I invite Mama by 3. We are engaged, so Mama will come. Mama will meet her there. When Mama meets her, she will stay more than 5 minutes. She will go. If she is really a friend, she will become a friend to her. You know what I'm saying? She will frown. She will frown. I said, why are you frowning? Don't you know her? She's my, she's my, she's my fiancée. Yeah, yeah. I want to talk to you. Must she always be here when I'm coming? I said, eh, do you have any other agenda? I thought you came to visit me. But today you don't see that kind of thing. Once a brother sees a sister, the first thing coming to his mind is an immoral thought. Can I shock you? If you're a brother and you have this immoral thought for sisters, they will lose respect for you. Let me, let, me, let me give you a trick. A sister can confide in a brother she knows has no sexual intentions to her. She will tell the brother anything. She will see the brother as her friend. She will open up her heart and tell him anything. But you as a young man, you have not had one female friend in your life because you are a devourer. Anyone you see, you chop him. Anyone you see, you chop him. Anyone you see, you chop him. You are a chopper. You are a, you are a consuming fire. So, no sister is your friend. We are laughing, but I'm saying the truth. Number three, this list to number three. Separate love from infatuation. In choosing a life partner, separate love from infa infatuation. There are some of us young ladies here, we have a particular man we like. We do not like men that are not dark. See, the kind of man I like must be dark. So the kind of man I like must be light skin. 
you are not ready. You are not in love. You are infatuated. Ah, me, I can't marry a man that is short to twa. A girl shot me married. Twa. God forbid, I reject it. Now, I'm not saying people don't have their peculiarities, but if that becomes your control, some young men are like ladies who have a particular shape. The truth is that it's not the shape that's your problem. You are infatuated. Because such people, even if they get married, they will still be looking for ladies like that outside. You don't go for somebody, go for a partner. You, have, you, you want a partner, say, why? I just like, you know, me. You see, me. My problem is that once I just see men that are just fine, I don't know. I just like it. Hey, being fine is relative. There are some men who outward are very fine. Inward, you are in trouble. They will finish you. So, looks are good. But modresty is the best. Outward is the container. Inside is the content. The content is of more essence than the container. Actually, have you seen some women who are married to some men who don't look good and women are crazily in love with them? Yeah. There's a way a man can be so nice to a woman, she becomes, he becomes fine in her eyes. So nice. You look at the man, say, wait a I saw, a, 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 I was invited to a wedding. <laughs> it was a brother, I was invited to a wedding. They did it in a hotel. I was upstairs. They said, there's a wedding downstairs, just come. So a, a pastor said to me, says, my younger sister getting married. I said, ah, really? So he described the girl. I prayed for her like twice. I even prophesied on her. I said, what? As he said, if you come, they will just faint. They don't know you are around. I said, okay. So I went there. When I went in, they all shouted, Apostle is here. I was quiet. You didn't know I was quiet. I was. The lady was very beautiful. The man. The lady was wonderfully made. The man was fearfully made. So I'm, I say, kill and she was all smiles. <laughs> Time for pictures. He said, he said Daddy, 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 meet, meet this is the man God used to prophesy about. And the guy was, Hello. Even the sound of his voice was annoying. <laughs> Hello. I, I don't like girly men. You know what I mean? Girly, girly men. Have you seen men that work like that? Men, men. What's that? I like men, men, you know men. When they are walking, men, you know. <laughs> One of the things you must learn in this, uh, brothers around me, they know how to walk. Walk like men. I'm not communicating. You don't see me walk like one defeated. When I pass you, you know say man pass you. Oh. Oh. hallelujah so I look at them but later after a couple of months I now understood why such a nice man am I saying start marrying ugly people because they are nice that's not, that's not what I said I'm saying <laughs> I'm saying that the content is of more essence than the container tell your neighbor the content is of more essence than the container. Infatuation is not love. Love is godly vision, but infatuation is bodily passion. When you see somebody and all that matters to you is the body of the person, the body of the person, that is not love. It will not last. When people keep admiring you because of how you look, how you look, your body, your, somebody sends you a message, say, Kai, look at your size. I can't resist it. Don't reply such. Don't even reply him. He's looking for who to use. He said, I'm just looking at you. A lot of things that I can do to you were just going through my mind. Tell him, like what? A, prayer. B, fasting. Three, intercession. Choose any of the three. He said, no, that's not what I'm talking about. They say, then I don't want to hear. Such things should not move you. They shouldn't move you. I'm telling, my, you see, my teachings are very practical. I teach practical teaching. You see this error? Somebody will tell you you look good and you 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 feel you feel you you, you feel carried away. No.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Love is future driven. Impartation is emotional, emotion laden. Love is future driven. Impartation is emotion laden. Anybody who is conscious of looks, we always have multiple partners. When you want to settle down, you want to get married, or you want to get, like I said, not husband, wife, life partner is stronger than husband, is stronger than wife. When that consciousness of life partner, you know that you're going to be here for a long time, for the rest of your life. Amen. I'm happy at a very younger age in my life that what I called a woman was somebody of character. At the younger, so it helped me. I wasn't confused. I proposed to only one person in my life, and that is the person I married. I say this before God. I was a, I was an, a resident pastor in a church in Lagos. They call it the Millionaire Church because of people who were there. We had lots of multi-millionaires who had grown-up daughters, and I was a single resident pastor. And you know some rich kids are mentally very stupid people their parents really have a lot of money many of them have no sense many not all many pastor when the man is rich the first thing he does when he has kids he begins to domesticate them teach them how to be sensible so that nobody just comes and plays on their intelligence so i was in that kind of ministry with a lot of eligible youths there were lots of things i stopped when i became the resident pastor number one i stopped picnic youth picnic i stopped it youth vacation they'll carry themselves as youths they'll go to a resort maybe they'll go to badagri beach or they'll go to bad beach just hang around we have bikini we all that and all that have a good time after that with their bikini and with their bomb shots with their trousers they hold their hands and they are praying what are you praying on bikini and on bomb shot i stopped it so as a resident pastor i stopped a lot of things i said this is not productive this does not work they have suya nights when they will hang out all of them will buy suya they will eat with suya in their mouth you are what the lord 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 Eshada, you are what the lord you are what the lord you are i stopped it <laughs> So I, <laughs> I said, no, this one, there's no future in this thing. I do things that are future. I stopped it. So I stopped a lot of things. So I was in the midst of massive temptation. Number one, my salary at that time that my pastor was paying me was 1,000 naira. That was my salary. And he didn't pay me for four months. And yet, I never fell into immorality with anybody yet i saw money i saw gift it was massive i mean it was like competition this is bringing five suits so i said every thanks to this person she brought suits for me say hey how many say five only five only five i'm coming that one brings seven here yeah? they bring i mean foodstuffs all kinds of meal i said father please help me i saw money but on condition the condition of the money was that there must be a relationship but I had one thousand dollars salary. My pastor won't pay me January salary. He paid me around March. I treat people well because I was not treated well. I know how painful it is when you don't treat people well. They will see what want to kill you, and they will let it kill you. That is why I treat people well. Anybody you see that is working for us, or a pastor in this ministry, or walking around me and say he's suffering, slap him. He's a liar. This is one of the ministries our pastors are too well taken care of. But if you have a pastor steals money in Omega, you are finished. Because you have no reason to steal. So I saw all that kind of things. But there was something that kept me. When I see somebody behave, I must see an error. Either the person is too proud or is too conscious of their body. I was too conscious of I was looking for somebody with character 
I said, my wife is not in Lagos. No, I'm leaving. So that you must understand that people need to like you because wow, it's your attitude, your character. Now you must understand your weaknesses and do not go and meet somebody who has. When you want to have a relationship and you are a lady who is sexually very weak, be more interested in marrying somebody who is sexually very strong not a guy that wants the leave both of you in the room for five minutes five minutes they just come out they go they lock door leave two of you after five minutes when they come back the next thing they hear is lord we are sorry lord we are sorry amen a young a young man came from the u.s and wanted to get married so he told his friend he said i need a good christian girl with character it's okay so the, the friend was a pastor it's okay the girl the friend came with a girl <clears throat> and told the girl said please i'm coming let me get something drop the girl there he went out fixed some things in his phone <clears throat> blah 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 before he came back ah, he saw the guy dressing up what happened he had slept with the girl so he now said when he was he said, what happened he said she she heard that was from the U.S. and she was saying some things and something happened. Ha. Just now I went to fix phone. Less than one or thirty minutes. What is your problem? He said, okay. The boy said, okay, okay, please. Hey, when are we going to the house of the girl that I'm going to marry? He said, that is the girl. The boy said, God forbid. You see? You see life? The boy said, God forbid. Somebody I just met now. Just slept with now. I will not marry. Ah, all my friends, you are so good. They say, God forbid. You are not getting something here. Make yourself, make yourself hard. Hard to get. How much somebody just buy you Mr. Big ice cream? How much? How much is that? How much? Eh? 500. One just buy you one Mr. Big ice cream. Bam. And to make matters worse, just put one scotch egg on top. That's how you are shining your teeth like close up. For me? Oh my, oh my God. Oh my God. You just know what I like. Just the way I like it. Cultivate a godly character. That's number four. I'll stop here, I think. Can I stop here? Cultivate a godly character. Proverbs 19, verse 13. Proverbs 19, verse 13. Come, so you are going to be very fast now. Proverbs 19, verse 13. Proverbs 19, 13. A foolish son is the calamity of his father, and the contention of a wife is a gradual dropping. It's a continual dropping. Contentious women. You are a contentious girl. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 30 favor is deceitful beauty is vain but a woman that fears the lord she shall be prayed forget about your beauty your character is of more importance than your beauty Proverbs 31 verse 30 favor is deceitful beauty is vain but a woman that fears the lord she shall be praised she shall be praised your character as a lady cultivate a god People that have good character, it didn't come with them from heaven. No, they cultivated it. People that know how to cook, nobody is gifted with cooking. They learnt it. Hi. No man, no man, whether it's a boy, it's a little. No man likes to be talked back to. When a man is angry, he's talking. Keep quiet. When he's done. Tell him you are sorry. Even when you are right. Even when you are right, say you are sorry. When everything is calm, present your facts. Say, I'm sorry. Say, but can, when is can I now talk? This, this, this. But I've heard all you said and I receive it. I receive what? This, I, I think this way. I think. He will not want to leave that kind of person. My wife cannot sleep if I'm not happy. It's not possible. She will text are you okay okay sorry i can't sleep sorry 
Sorry. No. As a young girl, you offend somebody, you are waiting for the person to call you. Say, you, look, you are dying, no, you are dying. You carry your phone. <laughs> he has not sick call. You think I will call him? You drop it. <laughs> you carry again. <laughs> he has not sick. Who has a phone? Who has a phone? Give me a phone. <laughs> you are dying. You miss him very much. You are charging your phone, you keep it. As you are doing everything, you are passing. You think I will call him? I will call him. <laughs> you pass again. After the while you go. Hmm. So this guy really, he really will not call me. Okay. <laughs> you come back again. Kai. He desire to flash his line if he's busy. <laughs> Enough flash line. You cut it. Eh, he's talking to somebody else. <laughs> Especially, wait, especially now that if you're on the WhatsApp, WhatsApp for you, when he's busy, you know somebody's online. So you keep checking. He's online, no. He's online, no. And he's not talking to me. He's online. You are proud. You are proud. Carry your phone. I am sorry. Come, deliver yourself from my blood pressure. All right. <laughs> Am I blessing somebody here? Yeah. A godly character. Proverbs 6 verse 26. Proverbs 6 26 and Proverbs 12 4. Proverbs 6 26. I'm talking of the ladies now. Proverbs 6. He said, For by means of a warish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread. An adulteress will own the precious life. When you are a lady, <laughs> all you can offer to a man is sex. That's all. You will turn your husband to a piece of bread. It will be irrelevant, not useful. Every day before you leave the house, it's sex. You come back, sex. When you get to office, you'll be sleeping. Management meeting, you cannot think straight. He's looking, but he's not seeing. They tell him to sign a proposal. He signs his will. Why? All you bring is sex. You are not useful for anything. Your husband is not like a piece of bread. Before he finish, he leaves the house in the morning. Sex. He comes in the afternoon to get a fight. Sex. He's going to leave me. Sex. So you don't understand though. I must do it though. I have to keep my man. Though. No. You are killing him. At the end of the day, he's going back to the office. He's sleeping in the car. Because he has married Weary. If that is all you bring on the table, then there's a problem. Hello? Anger is an attitude a woman must not have. If you are a lady and you have anger problems, you have to pray. No lady who has anger can keep a good home. Yes. Cultivate how to avoid anger. Listen, one of the best ways to control anger is that when you are upset, don't talk. Start learning it. When you are upset, do not speak. Number one. Number two. When you don't want to be upset, do not overthink an issue. Something happens, you think to the left, you think to the right, you wait here, eh, eh, and now ignore me. As he ignore me now, what does it mean? It means that he's looking down on me. As he's looking down on me, what does it mean? He has no value for me. As he has no value for me, what does it mean? I am useless. Eh? Because I laugh with him. Ah, you get angry. Don't overstress a matter. When something happens, let it go. Hello? Anger. You know what the Bible says? It says, study to be quiet. Eh? And mind your own business. Study to be quiet. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Character is what sustains beauty. No, no, hold on. Have you not seen some men? They have a beautiful wife. You will not see one riffraff. They are moving with outside. You see, ah, is this man sick? Look at the wife. Look at the. Have you heard some story like that? Because that lady is kneeling down 20 times. Good morning, sir. She doesn't say, sir. Sir. How are you, how are you sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Can I get you coffee? The man says, mm, coffee or tea, honey or sugar. He said, okay, okay. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. She does not even look him at the eyes. Can't look in his eyes. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. He said, like, oh, she's acting. She's strategizing. Targeting his pockets. His pockets. That pocket. She targeted. Yes, sir. But the wife at home. Welcome. Welcome. Are you hungry? What kind of stupid question is that? <laughs> you want to eat? Eh? What do you want to eat? Let me go and prepare. What? Is now you want to prepare? Amen. Amen. The lady has to cultivate a good character. The guy has to cultivate a good character. Proverbs 22, 27. Proverbs 22, 29. Proverbs 22, 29. Proverbs 22, 29. 22, 29 and 29 verse 5. Proverbs 22 verse 29 and Proverbs 29 verse 5. Proverbs 22, 29. See as thy man diligent in his business. A man, a man diligent in his business. He shall stand before kings and not mean men. Proverbs 29, verse 5. Proverbs 29, verse 5. A man that flattereth his neighbor spreadeth a net for his own feet. There are men, there are boys that gossip. Boys. Flat. Some of you think, some young men think, once a girl you like a girl and the girl begins to talk on how nice another guy is you think the best thing to do is to run down that boy no you are not teaching her anything every man in the relationship should be the role model to his partner all because all because the guy said hey, hey say my dear how do you see that brother ah, that brother is anointed he's trying see that one hmm. have you not heard that the father is poor very poor family oh. he's a useless guy forget that thing he's doing on the altar i know some secret no Real men do not bring down other men before a woman. What should you say as a man? Say, yeah, the guy is good, wonderful. Wonderful guy, great guy. I like him. You know what you tell that lady? You have just communicated to her that you are a man of esteem. Nobody intimidates you. But... There are a lot of things people find out, you know. I was, I was, one time my wife and I were talking about something, and she mentioned something, and I told her, I said, yeah, no. He said, you know, and you kept quiet. I said, what do I have to say? It doesn't mean anything to me. Am I communicating? I can't see a man now standing in front of mama and talking with mama. Then I'll turn my neck and, what are they saying? Me. You will try hard, though. I'm not intimidated. See, I'll not be worried. Hey, hey, I hope he, he's not trying to get our attention. Hey. You go try. You know what I've done? I don't walk. See, I don't even bother myself. I just... Am I talking to somebody? When you are a person, a man of quality, there is something you carry. You are not intimidated. You don't trust. You have to cultivate trust. You have a relationship with your life partner and a phone is busy. You're always worried. Why is your phone always busy? What is your problem? Are you MTN? What kind of talk is that? When she tells you, oh, sorry, you called my phone was busy. Says, okay, it doesn't matter. Um, see, see, see. No. Let them know you are, you are a man of esteem. So you have been online since you have been online, they reply me, but you are online replying somebody else. Are you not busy? Either flattery. In those days, I used to hear my father say, Women gossip, men discuss. These days, there are some boys that gossip, they gossip that their younger sister. Very, very annoying. 
Proverbs 23 verse 2. I'm telling you how to cultivate a godly character as a man. Stop talking down other men. Number two, be diligent in business. Be diligent in business. Be, be a hard worker. Don't be lazy. Stop, don't spend all your life in the gym. You want to build six pack and eight pack. All the people that build packs in the gym, they end up as bouncers. Their job is bouncers or bodyguard. I'm here to see a general manager with all the packs. You see general manager with big stomach. The guy with the pack is his driver. Spend all your life in the gym. Six pack. Moses. Why? So that you can have effect as a man. That doesn't put food on anybody's table. I said this some time ago. I said this, and I, you need to understand it as a single person. You need to understand this. Spending time in the gym is to make you look healthy. Not because you, become, you want to become a ladies man. Real women do not marry fine boys. Real women marry handsome men. Handsome. It means in their hand there is something. Good men do not marry women they pick from the road. They marry women they go and pick from their father's house. Yeah, sure. But uh, some people actually pick. So, come on, let's weigh the positives. Godly character. Proverbs 23 verse 2. Bring that up. Proverbs 23 verse 2. Bring that up. I'll just give one more point and my God, I didn't know I was going to take this much time. Proverbs 23, 2. Am I wasting your time? Proverbs 23, verse 2. Alright, let me check that myself. Okay. And put it a knife to he said, and put it a knife to thy throat, if thou be a man given to appetite. If you are a man who, are, who has no control over his appetite, the Bible says it is better you put a knife on your throat. <laughs> you didn't get that? It might be sexual appetite. It might be food. Literal food. Any form of appetite. He said, if you have no control over it, put a knife. On your throat in other words commit suicide there are people who have the bible calls there's something called the bible called temperance is a fruit of the spirit self-control why does god give us self-control god gives you self-control because god wants you to be able to control yourself you didn't get that God gave you self-control because God wants you. God knows that sometimes the enemy will battle with your control. So God wants you to be able to control yourself. That's why God gave you self. So it becomes a problem when we do not have the capacity to control ourselves. Are you blessed at all? Can I give one more point? Ah. Uh, no, no, just one, just one, just one. Discover your assignment. In choosing a life partner, you must discover your assignment. Don't forget, I said to you in starting, you don't attract what you want. You attract who you are. As a matter of fact, there is a way a husband and a wife grow to a point, they start looking like each other. They start looking like each other. You see, ah, this, this man and the wife, they resemble. You now say, who the... Who does this child look like? Is it the mother? Is it the father? Is it the, the child look like two of you? Discover your assignment. Listen to this. What if you will say yes to a man or no to a man is because you have weighed him with your assignment. You weigh him with your assignment. If he doesn't fit in to your assignment, you can say yes to him. God has given you a singing ministry as a girl. And a guy is proposing marriage to you. Guess what the guy says? See me, my wife. She must not go anywhere. She must not go anywhere. She must be indoors. Morning to night. If I go out, I'll meet her. If I come back, I'll meet her. If I... 
just tell him no i'm not marrying you why because he does not blend with your assignment he doesn't blend with your assignment he doesn't blend adam first of all discovered his garden before he discovered eve do not accept a proposal or give a proposal until you have discovered your garden my time is up god bless you we'll take a few questions and then i'll just bless you if you have a question you can write it but if you want to want us to hear it you can just raise your hand out of all I've said, I'm going to take maybe 10 questions. If you have a question, you have to come, come this way because of the mic. If you have a question, come this way, this way here, yeah, because of the microphone. If you have a question, if you have a question, come here. Just stay there, stay there. But if you, if, if you want to write it, you can write it. Lord, you rest forever. You're the same. I got me to the game that night. You lift up. You gave me a song. I got me to the game that night. Hallelujah, be seated. Can I sit down? Can I sit? Okay, but when if you have some questions, I want to answer by standing or making examples. I'll stand. The line, the line is increasing. Stop the line. Stop the line. It's okay. Others, others that are written, who ask them. Answer. Ask your question, lady. Your name, your branch, or where you live. Your, your name, your state, your question. Um, thank you, sir, for uh, my name is Duruji Vanessa. I'm from Imo State. My branch is Lagos, OFM in Lagos. Well, Papa, you said something about um, the physical appearance. But there's this mentality I believe most men have. They disguise themselves when they want to approach we the ladies. Maybe just because they don't want us to be aware of what they have. So my question is, I don't know if it's actually proper for them to disguise themselves. Because most guys might have a car and decide to pack it somewhere and dress rough just because they want to approach you. And you're not knowing full well that appearance matters a lot. So yeah, I understand. I, don't know if I understand your question. The truth is, it, what's your name again? Vanessa. Vanessa. Vanessa, everybody disguises, including you. Everybody. Everybody. Calm down. Um, <laughs> a man may choose how he wants to get his lady. It's up to him just know what you want as a lady when i talk about appearance some dress well some don't dress well App appearing well is good naturally when you are going to get a job interview you need to get a suit it's good naturally but when the person opens his mouth or the person begins to act you know who he really is all right so appearance is good but appearance is not 100 percent everything if somebody disguises because he wants to get a nice lady or a lady who doesn't like him because of his wealth and all of that it's up to him just make sure as a lady you know what you are looking for because a man may disguise because he doesn't want a lady to know that he's rich 
but yet he has a very terrible attitude even if the lady finds out he's rich tomorrow the lady may say yeah you are rich and i'll find that but i can't stay with you because that attitude is not going to let me stay so appearance is good in as much as i do not support men to disguise they should come the way they are but most people have done that and they have been deceived so they want to check very well but what matters are you that is the recipient make sure you know what you want whether it dresses dirty dresses nice if you know what you want you know who to go for thank you sir daddy we have a written questions here at two these two questions are similar as a man is it okay to go into a relationship with a lady where you are not ready for marriage so due to finance and the other one said at what age is person expected to go into a relationship so the two if you are going to go into a relationship or you are not ready for marriage what do you want to be doing you never enter a relationship until you are ready that you can now think of settling down there is age is age is number age is what when you know you are mature you can control your emotions you can control your acts you can con you have a grip over your prayer life you have a grip over your spiritual life when you are mature in mind in character in attitude you talk of a relationship there are many 45 year old boys 45 year old boys and there are many 29 year old men so age is relative when you are mature, you're going to marry. Next question. I celebrate grace, sir. My name is Cyprian Oluchi from Enugu State, but I'm from OFM Angba, Kogi State. My question is like this. Most of our spiritual leaders made us to understand that before you choose a life partner, you must go into prayer and fasting. So my question goes this way. Daddy, must you really hear from heaven directly calling a name that this is a specific person you must marry? Or you have to find out qualities all right who gave calm down who gave eve her name adam was it god no now let me say something prayer is a guide you don't wait i didn't see my wife in a vision when you see the person the spirit you know the way we spiritualize things eh? Some brothers do not even know how to propose. I mean, a brother sees a sister now. A brother sees a sister. He says, Sister, God bless you. Shall we pray? It's not time to pray, it's time to talk. Spirituality is important, but let me tell you the three things. Hold on, the three guidelines. I think I've taught this before how to know the will of god in numbers 23 he said the people of your tribe same tribe she must be born again number two your spirit must bear you witness listen god can show people their partner it's true but you do not tie an encounter to a pattern or a setter will capitalize on it and manipulate you if you keep waiting for dream 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 to see a partner the devil will manipulate a dream and show you a jezebel or show you a demon of a man god can just open up yourself to god and let god lead you okay it doesn't have to be one voice coming from heaven my son my son i speak i speak thou shalt marry sister abigail for argue not with the lord for he told the lord speak it and do not say nehi nehi because this is the voice of the Lord. <laughs> Holy Spirit, direct me. He will direct you. But you may not necessarily hear a voice. Next question. There is a written question here, sir. As a lady, I dreamt about a boy, about marriage. And the boy is not approaching me. But another boy is asking for my hand in marriage. What will I do? You have been thinking about that boy. That's how you dreamt about him. The Bible says, watch me. I'm not you know God works in mysterious ways. God works in mysterious ways. 
You have been thinking about one, you dreamt about that one. Another one is approaching you, is a confirmation to the revelation you saw that a boy is coming. The, the only problem is that the faces are different. So go for the one that is available, ignore the one in the dream. Next question. Praise the Lord. My name is Ayadili Sunday from Ondo State Branch. Ondo State, um, the question is, you talked about uh, relating, discovering purpose and relating with our partner. So I want to ask, what in, if in a situation, maybe you've seen a lady, you discussed your dreams and goals and you, that we, are going to, we are going to travel abroad together, we are going to do all that, but in marriage, she turns her back and starts doing the opposite. Such situations, what do we do sir are you married the fear sir are you married no sir so how, how do you know she will turn her back when you marry marry first thank you sir let me advise you there are people that can become manipulated they agreed on a purpose have you not seen men who will tell a girl that don't go to school i'll train you as soon as the girl gets married it becomes a problem such a thing i blame the girl because he's giving you a promise now you have an opportunity before you to go to school hold on to the opportunity not the promise go to the school tell him don't worry you will hold on tell him you will train me for my masters let me get my degree so i have something to hold so that in case you change your mind i know i, I don't lose at any point so what i'm saying in a nutshell is that do not have fear for negativity in the future do not be pessimistic be optimistic that the future holds something special but if in case the devil enters that girl to become manipulative, Bible says that shall cast out devils. Cast out that devil. Cast it out and fulfill your destiny. God bless you. A rich question here, Daddy, sir. Uh, if he said, the person said, if you are dating a guy and the guy has not mentioned marriage before you and another guy is coming, Am I free to date the one that is coming now since the previous have not measured anything like marriage? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Discuss it with him. If you are dating somebody, you should be able to discuss everything with the person. Let him know. There's somebody asking my hand in marriage and I'm considering it. That should either make him do what he has to do or go and get a life in his village. If, <laughs> if someone is ready to settle, and you, as a lady, you are ready to settle. If you are really dating somebody and you are a believer, of course, no, you know what dating is, right? There's no sexual morality there. Both of you are very close. You discuss everything. You talk to yourself. You are, you are friends. You are very close. You cannot tell him, somebody is asking my hand in marriage, and um, I'm not getting younger, so I'm thinking I may consider it. If he is ready, if he's not ready, it's up to him. Praise the Lord. That's all. Papa, thank you very much, sir. My name is Promise John Mabu from Delta, Abbotu. My question is this you know, you, make, you talk about purpose that is very important in picking a life partner. My question is how can one? be able to discover his or her purpose and be convinced. Then the second question, sir, is like maybe you know a girl, why maybe you know a girl while we are tender and you people grew up together as a friend. Then later both of you parted. Then after many years both of you met. Are you are you talking of yourself? Yes, sir. Just say it. I know a girl. We parted. We're friends. Don't say you know a girl. You say it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Let's, <laughs> let's listen to him. So, sir, the girl that I met her this year. So wait, wait. You knew her before? Yes, sir. How many? How long ago? That was since 2005. How? How did? What do you mean when you say you knew her? How? What did you I went to my uncle's house to acquire his key so no, no not i'm not asking of location when you say you knew her how intimate it was through worship center how were intimate? you close were you close no sir no sir, no, sir. wait now wait everybody 
you, you were not close? No, sir. Okay, okay, go on. You now met her again this year or what? Y yes, sir. Okay, so. As at when I met her, so I thought over her, so I discovered that uh, at least by the grace of that, she can fit in. What makes you know? Did you discuss with her? No, sir. So how do you know she can fit in? Sir, how I know what is this? You know, okay. Anytime I go to my mom's village, my uncle, who knew her very well, even more than I know, so anytime I hear about her, they keep telling me... Telling no, 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 no. She cannot be emotional with your uncle. She, she will behave with your uncle with respect. So your uncle cannot give you a, a correct version of who you want to marry. As, uh, the second way I got some... Uh, and so I know her is while she was schooling in Agua, while she was schooling in college. So though I was not schooling with her, but at the well, same time, as I, I, I do see her once in a while we greet. So... So since ever then, so I began to see that. No, let me advise you. There is what they call. Listen, get my message. Maybe they'll put it in the book because I'm I'm picking your mindset. There is dating, courtship, marriage. You cannot know somebody without dating. It's dating that will not lead to courtship. Courtship leads to marriage. Dating is you are my friend. I'm your friend. From being friends, I now know you well. So you cannot claim you know her when you are not yet friends. So you get to know her, be a friend, relate with her. Are you following me? On a pure ground, but you will be able to relate with her. Some things you saw from a distance, you may discover they are not really so. Or you may discover they are so. The first one you said was about purpose. Your purpose is your discovery. What you have passion for. Your reason for existence. How do you know? I said this before, that purpose is not a decision. You don't just decide. You discover it. That thing that you have passion to do. That thing that you can do it with joy. That is your purpose. Are you following what I'm talking about? That's your purpose. You must first discover that. When you discover that, you begin to understand how to nurture it, how to bring it out, how to go about it. The next question. Thank you, Daddy, sir. There is a question here, sir. Say you, I am a music minister. And the man coming for me is from a Catholic church. And I truly, truly, he has been able to pass most of my, most of my assignment. And also, <laughs> lecturer. <laughs> and also, I really love him. Is it wise to marry such a man, though sometimes he get angry because I, he said I stay so much in church? <laughs> well now listen i have no problem with denomination i have no problem with denomination but there are certain den denominations you may belong to and you may not be able to manifest your gift because they have a pattern are you following me they have a pattern your gift just dies Okay, so I, I, don't, I don't have a problem. You have to discuss that. If I worship in your church when we get married, how do I manifest this my gift? Let's talk about it. Am I going to be doing albums only, but I won't sing in church? Number, number two, if somebody is angry that you stay too much in the church, you are already in trouble. Because every man who loves you will be happy that you are always in the church. If you say you stay too long in the church, uh, it means that your assignments that you gave him, they are not complete. Because part of the assignment should be spending time in the church and see his reaction. A man will be happy when a woman... I've heard some men, when they are married, they are bragging about their wife. They say, my wife can pray. It's an addit additional advantage. So I, I do not really think that you have given him enough assignment. You need to give more assignment to that young man. Next person. Thank you, sir, Papa. I celebrate grace. I am really blessed by the teaching. My question Where are you from? Where are you from? My name is Utolo the Gospel. I'm from Delta State, Worry 2. My question goes like this. I will discover my purpose, my assignment, and getting ready for marriage. And I found a lady, and we are in the same line and the same page. 
But I discover after interaction, she has character deficiency. What should I do? What about calm down? Character deficiency is relative. What about your own character? The same line. He said they are on the same line. It means that your own character is deficient. And the same page. The same page. <laughs> come, come, come. Wait. Hallelujah. Discuss when a lady has a character. Amen. Amen. I said amen. amen. When a lady has a character that you are not comfortable with, discuss it with the person. When I was to get married, there was a character in Mama that I didn't like. She does not ask for anything at all. Not even transport. <laughs> Nothing at all. It was a problem. I said, which guy? Because to me, I didn't think it was real. I thought it was fake. How can somebody just come? You know, go ask for transport. Do you want mineral? No. It's well. you want. It's huh? a good character, Daddy. That no, was no hold on, character. hold on. I'll tell you why I say there's a problem. Do you want mineral? No. You want water? No. Ah, you are going. You want transport? No. Ah. And what do you want for Christmas? Nothing. Should I get you a phone? No. I knew. That people like that who are so too comfortable, even when there are things that need attention around me, because they are so comfortable, they will not want things to change. I was seeing the future. So I called and said, Come sit down. When you have a need, tell me. I now discovered it's not necessarily because she doesn't need it, but she doesn't want to bother me. Are you following what I'm saying? And I say, oh, oh, not that you don't need it. He said, I need it now, but you don't have now. Will I kill you? I say, uh -uh. this one, I have this one. Mineral, I have that one. <laughs> Phone, I have that one. So, if somebody, you say somebody has a bad character, have you discussed with the person? You will discover that it's your bad character that is even triggering her own bad character. So, discuss it with her. Discuss it with her. I will just summarize a written question here. Uh, the person wants you to just show light on the information they have got you from their pastor that is preferable to get married to an Omega child if you are an Omega child. That please, can you say some of the advantages of getting married to someone from the same denomination? 100%. So, and the, the other part of the question, it says that you said we should not put our heart on relationship and if you don't put your heart how will you not develop the relationship it's not a heart that develop relationship you don't need a heart you need your head to develop a relationship you need brain to develop a relationship you are not an estate developer you are not an estate developer what are you developing you need your head you put your heart into marriage are you following me you don't put your heart into something that is not yet seen number two um when you are in a relationship with somebody of the same ministry why is easy is because both of you hear the same voice the same training the same covering the same background the same prophet is easy but when your wife has a prophet who does not believe in fasting your ministry believes in fasting she come to the house she will eat morning eat afternoon eat night even in her dream she will eat there's going to be a problem because both of you have different backgrounds that is why we advise people we say see i go to them in church i say if you marry a person that is not from ofm we will join you but i'm not sure i may even attend i'm not under compulsion to attend but when it's both our reason is this most of us we have allowed them, we used to allow our sisters marry anybody. But one of them married brothers that we can't even call to order. Beat them, humiliate them. I don't want to marry a, a, a brother from a certain ministry. She was a very good sister here. Now she's divorced. When the guy was messing, I, I sent for the guy. The guy said, tell your former Jew that he's not my pastor. He was right. I couldn't do anything. I told the girl, I said, going by principle and protocol is right. 
that did but talk to him i'm dying i said i can't talk to him you are the one that left the house i went to pick somebody outside but just imagine the guy is in one of the branches of ofm if i summon him he will run down i'll tell him this is an attitude stop it he will obey so when two brothers are talking to you one of them is from another ministry one is from the same ministry go for the one that's from that same ministry because you have a future that is serious thank you very much sir my name is john peace ofm headquarter and i want to ask something a long time ago there's this guy is my friend we do go to mountains together pray together you go to where mountain mountain yes sir pray together wait when you go to mountain where do you sleep it's the same room but they demarcated it in the mountain yes sir all right so later at the end i just like him as a person because of he used to encourage me to do the things of god but at the end he started coming that he's interested in me that this is the revelation he had this is what god is saying and me i've not heard anything and i told him that me i'm not interested but he keep disturbing that if, if he did not marry me that his life not his life not produce something else and i said there are other ladies outside but the question i want to ask now is that daddy is it right to marry somebody who you don't have any interest for now first of all i don't blame him that he is in revelation how can you go to mountain with somebody and you expect him not to see revelation about you the same room the same room so so, so wait genesis chapter 6 verse 3 the lord said my spirit shall not strive with man if a voice is of god it is not by force the voice of god is a gentle calm voice somebody cannot tell if i don't marry you my life will not that is not right he may have actually heard god i don't know but he's going about it the wrong way and you if you like him as a person but there's no interest for a relationship don't force yourself because he said god said tell him also god should talk to you god should convince you or you must be interested if you are not interested there's no way you can go ahead and please stop going to the mountain because it, the more mountain the more visions you will see thank you that is sir there's a rich question here that is sir your the person is asking your opinion towards a fertility test before marriage since a lot of brothers most times have put some young lady in the tight corner after a wedding what you support of it what did i say what did i say i said gone are the days when they will say a girl must get pregnant before marriage that these days we should go in the redeemed christian church of god there's a new law in the redeemed christian church of god rccg baba debo just gave an order that for every marriage that will be consult conducted there must be fertility test must and if there's a fertility test and shows that the guy is impotent or the they will show both of you they will stop you because it's your choice they say this is what you're about to enter you still want to go inside you already know that this person cannot get you pregnant or this person cannot conceive so hundred percent i think we need to also initiate that i've not heard from god i will if i hear from the lord today trust me we'll do that so I'm, i've not heard from the lord about it if the lord instructs me that we should do that we'll do that because you need most if we are going to start praying let's start praying if your marriage is august and by july we discover you are you can't be fatter we'll move it to november let's pray for you for it to change so that by the time it, it changes we now see it's positive you can be fruitful we join you but by november it hasn't changed we'll take it to the next year while we are praying you don't know what i'm talking about do you understand me yeah we keep on praying we'll keep on praying and if in the process of praying the lady can no more wait she will marry the one that's available while we are still praying for you Yeah. Thank you very much, Papa. My name is John Joey Aputu. I'm from Edo State, but I say Nobu State. So my question is this: Is it good that as a as a young pastor, a young pastor that not go to school, he does is not educated at all, to marry another a lady that not educated? 
<laughs> who else would you who else will you marry? You have to marry somebody that is like you so that you can understand your pidgin English together now. How can you not educate a mother? If you are not educated, you can't speak good English. You have to marry somebody like you who cannot speak English so that both of you can communicate. But just make sure that your children are educated. Let me answer that question. I'm joking. Let me answer the question. Any pastor who is not educated, you are not yet old, you are still young. Go and get educated. Because if you are not educated, your ministry is already limited. No matter how anointed you are. And these days, there is education for convenience. There is distant learning. There is adult classes. So don't think, how can I go and do GC? Obasen, President Obasen Joe got his PhD at 80. Last year. Huh? Last, year. last year. Just last year. How they got his PhD? I was reading papers now that they just made him a, a, a counselor in class. He went back to school. He went back to school. I've seen people, when I was doing my master's program, I saw, you see people in class, they're 64, 65, 63. There are people you see who are in school. Mama went to school in my house. And it's still in school till now. Nobody's stopping you. Get all the degrees you can get in life. I mean, I think you already you started having children before you did your master's. Right? You have a master's in accounting. You already had to start having children. So you keep going because life itself is a school. These days, people think that once you are anointed, you don't go to school. Not everybody has a problem. Some people are not sick, they are not poor, they are not stranded, they are not depressed. So how can you bless their life? They don't need your prophecy, they don't need your healing. What they need is the word of God. So how do you communicate to them? So it's not important. You know, but I'll advise you. Go to school. And if you marry somebody that is not still educated, you have finally destroyed yourself. I know a guy who, who was in love with, in AAU, was in love with a young girl, was a professor. She was a lecturer, a young girl. And the guy has SSC. The first thing I asked myself is, how did they... But the lady said, you know what? I'm going to make sure you get admission into this school. Got admission for the guy. Make sure the guy was in school. When the guy was in 400 level, they got married. The guy went through school. She got pregnant, had a baby. Make sure he went for his master's in UNN. Has a PhD. As a matter of fact, now the guy is more of a senior lecturer to her. Why? He made sure they went to school. And the guy left ABU. He lectures now in UNN. Earns more salary. Left AAU, sorry. Now lectures in UNN. Earns more salary than her after 12 years of meeting. So you cannot continue life the way you met it. You've got to change. Thank you, Daddy, sir. Sir, I'm in a relationship. Both the parents, the parents of the, of the lady and the siblings does not want me at all. But the, but the girl do. We are both confused. What do we do? The parents. The parents are the siblings of the, the ladies. They don't want him at all. And the girl is in love. She's not. She's in love. She's not. Okay, sir. <laughs> if a girl cannot win her parents, she can win her siblings. Are you following me? You are in a relationship with a girl, the brother doesn't like you, the sister doesn't like you, this doesn't like you. It's because of the kind of thing she has told them. What for the parents that they are in a different generation, they are seeing what the younger ones are not seeing. But if a girl sells you, packages you well to her sibling, they will love you. So the girl is only pretending to love you, she does not love you because if she loves you. The first assignment you let her know for us to continue this, I give you an assignment convince your siblings, leave me to pray about your parents. But for at least your siblings, you can't enter a family where everybody doesn't like you. You are in trouble. Who will come to the wedding? So that's a, that, that's a disaster. Next question. My, my name is Ameshi Prince. I'm from other states. 
UBSEP branch in most states. My question is this, is distance has anything to do with relationship? If distance? Yes, because some people will say that they can't date or be in a relationship with somebody that is close to them. Why some people will find and say that they can't date or be in a relationship with somebody that is far from them. So, is distance a barrier in relationship? It's individual, it's individual difference. There are people who prefer to have a relationship with somebody who is abroad, so they can focus on their academics. There are some people that prefer to have a relationship with somebody who is in the same town, so that when they are bored, they will not be too lonely. They can have somewhere to drive to, or the person drives to them and they talk. It's individual differences. It's not um, a pattern. But when it, has, it gets to marriage, distance becomes a problem when you are married. But when you are not married, it's not a big deal. It's what you can handle. If you can handle long distance, it's up to you. If you can handle short, it's up to you. But when you are married, you should not stay far from your partner. Next question. Thank you, Daddy Sade. The question with me here yeah, is summary because it's a very long question. This young lady, she's in a relationship with a man of God, and uh, several times it will get the man of God offended, and the man of God said, I've forgiven you. But at the time, the man of God decided to take her to go and meet his prophet, and the prophet said she had to pay 5,000 naira for prayer before he, can, before he can pray for both of them, for both of them to get married. But without the 5,000 naira, they will not be cleansed. <laughs> he said, I am confused. I don't know what to do. Prophet the prophet. <laughs> prophet the prophet. <laughs> anyway, let me advise. You don't need money to be cleansed. You need the blood of Jesus. Once somebody charges or asks for money for prayer, that should already give you a check in your spirit that something is not right. And for that man of God that you are dating, to have that kind of prophet as his prophet, it means we have to examine him. Right? You have to be careful because you are in a wrong clique, except you are like them. But if you are truly born again and you have the spirit of God and you want to serve God genuinely, that is already a sign that something is not right. You don't pay money to see a man of God, a true man of God. You don't pay. You don't pay money for cleansing. You don't buy spiritual materials. Did you hear what I said? You may have heard of that. That happens a lot, especially in the East and some places. They charge you, you pay consultation fee. Right? It is not of God. When you want to see a man of God, on your own, God can put in your heart to sow a seed. On your own. It's not advisable to see a man of God empty. That's the truth. But it has to be willing. Not that there is a, a required fee. So as a lady, I will advise you, tell the, the young man, you are not comfortable with that kind of life. But if you want to go ahead, it's your decision. Thank you, sir. My name is Oge Testimony from Edo State here, Foga. <clears throat> the question I want to ask is this. How do you know a true proposal? And secondly, I have a friend that is after me for marriage. So I now tell him that I want to take him to my spiritual father to know him. He said no to after courtship. So I don't know if he's right. He is looking for something. He is looking for something. He's not serious. Avoid him. Now, one of the ways to know a person who is serious is that the person is ready to meet your pastor. And meeting your pastor is not even, is not even, does not even guarantee that he has passed the test. You must set down certain tests if he can pass it. All right, he must be born again. He must do all of those things I've, I've taught you, or some of the things I've said in my books. If you want to get married or understand a relationship, 
you must have read all our books on relationship my book mama's book and all our tapes go to the bookshop grab them listen to them by the time you listen to them like seven your head will be correct your head you it will be correct so if you want to know the, a true proposal go and get get those tips thank you daddy sir this is a funny question daddy i have a female friend who is 22 years old and her daddy still beat her till now is it normal and daddy what beta what do you mean beta Bafa, Bafa, Bafa. 22? Bat, 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 bat. Soap and water. At 22? At 22? Yes, the father is his number. At 22? <laughs> At 22, that is her. There's something wrong. Well, it's possible if the girl is an imbecile <laughs> but but if no there are people who are 22 and they are not normal if she's an imbecile she's not normal she cannot put water on her body but that is very wrong thank you sir all right once a girl gets to seven eight nine she becomes uncomfortable i have daughters when i'm coming they say daddy stop there stop there don't enter i say look at this rat where were you born <laughs> all right how old are they they are young there's an awareness that they already have so at 22 i, I can't say it's wrong if she's an imbecile the father can so we have to check the medical condition of the girl and if she's that she's sane and okay is wrong next question thank you sir um good luck from from abia over here branch my question goes like this is it right for your mother to choose for you someone to be with your lifetime partner no it's not right your mother can only advise but cannot choose. Do you understand? Thank you. Thank you, Daddy Sir. Is marriage by prophecy or choice? For instance, by prophecy, you are to marry a pastor and your choice is an engineer. What will you do? Marry your choice. But make sure your choice agrees with the Spirit of God inside of you. Because when you say prophecy is relative, number one, who is giving the prophecy? We live, in, we live in days where people can do any kind of game. People can arrange anything. They don't, somebody wants you to marry him, he doesn't mind going to give somebody money to say he saw a vision for you. We have seen that kind of games. So you must marry somebody that your spirit picks out for you to marry. Sir, is it possible to have a serious relationship at the age of 21 if the person is really... If the person is really wanting you for marriage and nothing else, and you have built up yourself with books and marriage, can I agree to the proposal? Um, it's relative. Your pastor has to be aware, so your pastor knows who the person is. At 21, you are not too young, you are not too old, but I think at 21, um, I'm uncomfortable. Because they have said no matter, um, no matter what the books you've read, there are certain things you naturally mature into. Experience important at 21. No. You need some more years. Yeah. Can a girl marry to a guy who is already having a child before? Yes. But you must know the circumstance around the child, or else you will have your own child and they will not marry you. Uh, it's a similar question that is uh, can you as a believer marry to a lady who had given birth to two children out of wedlock two yes uh, um one is okay two 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 okay 
well, like I said, is relative. No, sir. Yes, sir. Eh? Yes, sir. No, it's relative. Yes, sir. You can even marry somebody who has five. So even though the person has five children before, choice. it's your choice. Yes. We can't say, but we can only advise you. Yes. You need to know the circumstance surrounding why those men left. You have to know. Amen. How do you handle a guy who is hot tempered? When you say hot tempered, there are people that are hot tempered but they have control. Hot temperedness becomes a problem when it lacks control. Anybody that lifts his hand on you, do not marry. Don't even think about it. There are people that are hot tempered, it ends in verbal expressions. All right? And they have a control over it. But once people get physical, then please don't even go ahead. So, the last question that is, sir. Please, sir, can you explain the difference between love and lust? Love is of God because God is love, lust is of the devil because the devil is lost. Lost. Lost is selfish. Love is sacrificial. Lost always wants. Lost like what it can get. It's greedy. But love is giving. When you love somebody, you don't expect much. You are just ready to give. But lost is what you can get. What you want. Lost is self-satisfactory. But love is is sacrificial all right so you must understand that anytime somebody always wants from you when you are in love with somebody even if the person has not been to your house in 10 months you are not worried what matters i hope you are fine sorry i have not come to your house no no problem are you fine are you okay that is love lost i've known you for three months you have not visited me that's lost there's something he's looking for so lust is, is not sacrificial, but love is sacrificial. How can you go about a situation where your family brings someone for you to marry, but you don't have any choice? All these questions are questions that... I've already said that before. If you want to obey your family, it's up to you. I cannot tell you how to run issues by your family. I can only advise you. If your family makes choice for you, be ready to be running to your family when there are issues in the marriage you should be able to choose by yourself and if your mother or your father is bringing somebody to you don't be rude politely have a talk with them and let them know if you want me to go ahead in this marriage i will not be happy and if i'm not happy i will not make you papa i will not make you happy if this man deals with me i will come for you papa i will deal with you if this man doesn't to me i will come let him know that your father will have to rethink See, because if I'm not happy, I'll come and put the problem on you. So, your parents can only, good parents only advise you, but they don't choose for you. Let's be on our feet. Holy all of creation. Cause you got what is your name? We will worship awesome God. How great our heart Praise the Lord You alone You alone I'm standing on Standing on Your holy name Oh
his face to shine. You will not make mistakes. You fulfill the plan of God and the purpose of God. In Jesus' name. Alright, give me five minutes. Sit down. Give me five minutes. Who is God's stand? Who is God's stand? Is it somebody's name? God's stand. God's stand. Is it you? What's the name? You too? God's stand. God's stand. What's your name? Huh? God's stand. Get a, get a functional microphone. God's stand. That's your name. All right. Come. Come. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you bless him. Bless him. Look here. You want to go to school, but it's hard. Very hard, sir. It's hard. Yes, sir. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, sir. Five times. Yes, and sir. it's not working. Yes, sir. God is going to help you. Yes, sir. Your brain is going to open up. Why am I hearing blessing? She's my sister. Blessing. Yes, sir. Ogben Mudia. What's the surname? Yes, sir. She's you know him? Eh? Yes, sir. It's my brother. It's your brother? Yes, sir. What is Tuesday? What is Tuesday? My brother. Tuesday. Yes, sir. Is it name? Yes, sir. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus. You are a student. Yes, sir. I'll pray for you. Okay, sir. Like nursing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm a nursing student. You are a nursing student. Yes, sir. One, two, three. Yes, sir. Three hundred level. Yes, sir. All right. Let me pray for you. Where is Tuesday? It's 
immediately. Father, in the name of Jesus. When last did you talk to him? Last week. Last week? Yeah. All right. After I finish talking to you now, you can go and call him. Ask him what's going on. God is just getting him out of trouble now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. The Lord touch your family. Who is Frank? Who is Frank? Frank. Felix. Frank. Felix. Frank. Felix. Frank. Felix. What's your name? Frank Felix, sir. Huh? Sir, Frank Felix. Come. You are alone at Wadi. And you are alone at Holy. And you deserve the glory. Jesus, you are Lord. And you alone are told You alone are told You deserve the glory Jesus, you are Lord Let your glory fill this heart Let your presence feel my life. As a vessel I offer on to you. A sacrifice of praise is for you. Oh Lord, you alone at holy, mighty God, you deserve the glory, the glory, oh Jesus. You are Lord. Look here. Stand up. You will not end up useless. Amen. God will take care of you. Amen. I'm not seeing your parents. No, sir. Where are they? They are there, sir. Both of them? Yes, sir. For many years. Yes, sir. It's like you, your other siblings, yes, have been taking care of yourself. Yes, sir. And not just taking care of yourself, you are living with this scatter all of you. Yes, sir. This one go and stay with auntie. Yes, sir. This one go and stay with uncle. Yes, sir. This one go and stay with everybody scatter. Yes, sir. Now I see you in Benin. Yes, sir. In Benin. Yes, sir. I see you in Benin. When you get to Benin, you know Saint Savior. Yes, sir. You get to Saint Savior. You get to Saint Savior. There's a place. I'm seeing a place. When you go straight, you get there's a place like two roads. Yes, sir. You go further. Yes, sir. You see a place like Omomo. Yes, sir. Omomo, 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 Omomo Junction. Junction. Yes, sir. When you get there, you go like this. Yes, sir. You see a sawmill. Yes, sir. Your house is just by a sawmill. Yes, sir. Sawmill. Yes, sir. Your house is by a sawmill. Yes, Hallelujah. What is it? Why are you doing that? Put the mic. When I, when I was doing my IT in Benin, that's when I met him. I, I know that's the house he stays. So that's the house he stays. Yes. That because, I described. And he explained all this to me last, last year. That was last two years. He told you this last two years? Yes. Everything. This place I'm, I described is where he stays. Yes, that's where he stays. You know the place? Yes, sir. You know the house? Yes, sir. Stand up. In the times of trouble, when they seem to get you down, all your friends and loved ones, they are no Who is Lucy? Lucy. 
Onite Onitia Lucy Onitia If that's your name, come Blessing Moses Get you down all your friends and loved ones they are nowhere to why are you looking at me why, why are you shocked in Jesus who will wrap tears away and if your heart is broken just lift your hands and say I know that I can make it. I know that I can stand. No matter what may come my way, my life is free. I know, I know. An Omega member? Yes, sir. You are an Omega member? Yes, sir. What do you want to do in life? I'm a great man. You want to be a great man? I want to help you. That's um, what do, how do you want me to help you? Sir, I don't need impact. You need impact? Yes, sir. That's all you need? Yes, sir. Wow. Wow. You see, I just need impact. That is all I need. God said to Solomon, because you have not asked for riches or wealth, because you have not asked for the life of your enemies, you asked, Solomon didn't ask God for wisdom. Go back to your Bible. Solomon did not ask God for wisdom. Solomon asked God for an understanding heart. It was heart. It was an issue of heart, not wisdom. Wisdom is a gift. Wisdom is a, uh, a gift from God. But what he asked for was he had because no matter what you have is your if your heart is wrong wisdom will be a waste wealth will be a waste but heart god say oh you understood it that the key to everything is the heart guide your heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life so since you have understood the root of the matter of the heart you see wealth wisdom no king was as wealthy I'll pray for you. And I will do more than pray. Alright? Touch. Amen. Pick him up. Touch. Amen. Pick him up. Touch. Amen. Touch. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Pick him up. What branch does he worship? What branch do you worship? Beneath 16, sir. What's your pastor's name? Pastor Frank Edelma. Okay. Alright. We'll be able to help you start up a better life. A better life. Where's your father? Where's your father? It's in the village. Can I pray for you? Yes, sir. This is a new day for your family. Amen. I'm seeing a woman that's carrying too many loads. And God says he wants to lift up the load. Yes, Jesus, he wants to lift up the load and help you. Jesus. God will help you. Come. Lift your hands, everybody. Lift your hands. Grace, grace. God's grace. Grace that will pardon and cleanse within grace, grace 
God's grace Grace that is greater than all my sins Worship God Worship God Lady God is saying is lifting up the load and is going to give you a helper that will help your family. A helper touch. A helper in the name of Jesus. For every one of you who've come from all over, I release helpers for you. <laughs> Some of you next day, this time you'll be abroad. <laughs> Some of you by this time next year you'll be with your husband and your wife. Mola bakalish teliratata. Some of you by this time next year you already have a mega job. <laughs> by this time next year for someone it's already a new beginning for you. Amen. The sickness in your body, the infection in your body, I command the infection to disappear. Amen. The disease in your body, I command it to disappear. Amen. The affliction in your body, I command it to disappear. Amen. You are a graduate without a job, receive a job now. Amen. Everything that is a mountain before you is brought low. Amen. Whatever is a valley is exalted. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead and worship the Lord. Thank Him. Hallelujah. Thank Him. Thank Him. Connect to the word. Connect to the words I have just spoken. If you have a thousand, get a thousand naira, come and put it on the altar. Get a thousand naira.